Welcome to Take Two, the talk show where we take two actors and get two takes on the real lives of working performers. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. In Great Tales of Adventure, the reluctant hero is thrust into a daunting quest into the unknown. And along the way, a mentor figure often emerges to help guide our hero, train them for what lies ahead, or offer sage advice. Whether it's Obi-Wan Kenobi to Luke Skywalker, Morpheus to Neo, or even Miranda Priestly to Andy Sachs in The Devil Wears Prada, the teacher and the student relationship is pivotal in the hero's journey, and also in the adventures in acting. Having a mentor can help guide any actor in their own adventure tale, and the benefits of learning from someone with experience can impact their ability to succeed immensely. Today, it is my absolute honor to welcome to the set industry icon Gail Cronauer and the multi-talented Abby Killen. What an amazing way to talk about and highlight women in film. This is going to be so much fun. Abby, Gail, welcome to Take Two. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for being a part of our show here today. You know, on Take Two, I always like to start our interviews by letting our guests know a little bit about who my guests are and uh, where uh, they got started in their acting journey. And so, Abby Killen, I'd like you to introduce yourself to our audience and tell them how you got started in the adventure in acting. Yeah, definitely. So, I grew up in a really small town called Brookville, Ohio, and it just wasn't a whole lot of people around. It was a lot of farmland. Uh, we were on three acres and we had chickens and everything. So, every time I saw a new person, I was just enthralled by them because they always had a new story to tell and new experiences to share which would be my source of entertainment <laughs> because there just wasn't a lot going on. Yeah. Um, so I would like make up my own plays and make up my own songs. And that's really how I I grew up, was creating. Gotcha. All right. Well, that's fab fabulous, fabulous. Gail Cronauer, <laughs> how did you uh, start your acting journey? Tell our audience a little bit about your storied career mm -hmm. and how you got started uh, in this. Okay. So when I was a kid... I had flat feet, and the doctor said, uh, you should take dance classes. That would help your feet. So I started dancing, and that was my first experience on stage, and I loved it. And then I had a back injury, and my mother said, no more dancing for you. So at that point, I said, I'll show you. I'll go on stage. So in high school, I sang, and that led to musical theater, and that led to a love of performing in college, I thought I was going to be a doctor, but that didn't work out. I couldn't hack the chemistry. So I auditioned for a play, and this was at a very politically tumultuous time in our country's history. Oh, just like now. And um, I auditioned for a play that was called Viet Rock. And it was a play that took us as actors out into the audience to make actual contact with the audience member. Wow. And it was so powerful for me and for people who saw it. And I went, this is what I want to do. So for me, acting is about activism. It's about transformation, trying to figure out who I am, who I can be, uh, and telling great stories. And... It's become a way of creating my life. So, and I just kept it up. <laughs> fascinating, fascinating. You know, I actually, uh, on your IMDb page, mm -hmm. uh, there's a bio for Gail. And, and in that oh. bio, it says, she persisted. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Me and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we persisted. Yeah. That's inspiring. And, uh, you know, that kind of is a natural segue into talking about how you both actually ended up getting to know each other. Right. And uh, no, Abby, uh, you met Gail through uh, through uh, she was your teacher and your right. uh, essentially your mentor. Uh, tell our audience how that came to be. How did you end up encountering Gail on your early steps in your acting? Uh, acting? I remember the very first time that I saw Gail was I was accepting an award for the Wendy Wendy Brantley Memorial Scholarship. Oh. And I just remember you know, had a speech, and I was like, I want to get to know her because I thought it was so awesome. I was like, she just seems so cool. And I talked with her afterwards, and then I uh, auditioned for my first college production, which was Our Town by Thornton yeah. Wilder. And I was humbled to be cast as Emily Webb 
and I love the monologue that I did for my audition and I love that show and I still have really great memories of that show and what it means to me because a lot of it was like how I grew up um and it's just the importance of being just being in the moment and uh, and recognizing life like as we live it every right. minute <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a very 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 cool very cool uh gail uh can you share a pivotal moment in your acting career that shaped your approach to mentoring and uh, you know becoming that role in the acting community okay so uh i've thought about this a lot and the first thing that came to my mind was a conversation i had with my drama director, head of the department, at, in college. And I went to him and I said, Dow, his name was Meredith Dallas, do I have what it takes to be an actor? And he sat there in his office smoking his pipe and he just said, do you want to be an actor? And I said, yeah, but do I have what it takes? Do you want to be an actor? And he refused to say to me, yes, you can do it. You have what it takes. Be an actor. He was encouraging, forcing me to make the choice for myself. And I hadn't thought a lot about that until you asked me <laughs> what um, had inspired me to be a mentor. But that was really a pivotal moment realizing that there are things that you might be able to share with someone, ways you might be able to guide them, but in the end, the individual has to take responsibility for his or her life. And that's hard, but it's very truthful. Words of wisdom right there. Absolutely. Abby, how has your perception of acting changed from, you know, before meeting Gail to, you know, studying under her and becoming a kind of her pupil. I, um, I just really loved, there were so many tools that you were so generous in giving us as students. And it was really up to us to decide which, which ones felt more engaging. Cause if I felt distance mm. from a scene, sometimes you would give a tool and then it would feel different and then it would come across differently. And that would therefore affirm the work that we were doing in a way that was it that was um, very truthful and would help grow the scene. Right. So then you had different layers and different elements, like like different colors of the rainbow, if you will, like that you could add to a scene to make it different or to make it more engaging or to make it um, more interesting to you as a person too. Um, so a lot of these tools I still use in, in my work and in, in my life. Like if I'm, if I'm talking and I, and I, I don't want to get in my head, like I'll think and like there's expanding or driving and like I want to be expansive or I, I want to pull in. Well, let me, uh, let, let me kind of jump on that. Is, is there something from that learning for, uh, you know, through Gail that acting becomes part of what we do in life and it, you know do you take what you learn in acting and kind of bring it into what you do for you know for a job and things like that yeah yeah definitely so i work at markham fine drawers right now and i kind of flip the script when i'm when a new person walks in i try and ask myself ask myself like what are they looking for what are they wanting and that leads to different questions that i'm inspired to ask um, so that that way I get to know this person. I get to know who they are fundamentally in order to help them or in order to see what their style's like or or what they're looking for so that I can best assist them. And through that, you get a more personal connection with them and yeah. you learn their backstory. And, you know, what, this is a special moment. And they're, they're, whether they're getting married or they're, you know, buying a, you know, a trinket or something for somebody special. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a lot of uh, love and that goes into that. Yes. For sure. Uh, Gail. How do you balance nurturing your students' individuality uh, while teaching them uh, the fundamentals of acting? Everybody's different. Right, right. Well, and I and I think Abby talked about that just a moment ago. Um, I believe there were certain things an actor needs to know. I mean, you need to know this is what action means. This is what cut means. This is what relationship is. This is what an objective is. Um, 
don't fall off the stage. <laughs> you need to know. Uh, all of the analytical work. Uh, Abby was talking about questions, asking questions, and I think that's really important. What's the relationship that you're in with this person? How does that affect you? So there were certain things that, um, terminology that actors need to know. But in a class, I think it's really important to present um whether it's an improv or the creation of a monologue or some other special creative assignment that allows the actor to explore and nurture his or her, what I call you, Y-O-U, uniqueness. Because there's no one way to do it. And not there's no one way that fits everyone, as Abby was referencing a while ago. So to encourage people to feel okay about working in their own way, as long as it fits and accomplishes the objective, the task at hand, which is the play, the poem, the voiceover, the um, stage piece that you're doing, the screen work that you're doing. So balancing those two, I think, um, is really important. Gotcha. Fantastic. Oh, and I have to say that <laughs> one of my things in an acting class has always been no actor left behind. Because I think there are many situations where, oh, these are the ones who show promise or talent. These are the ones who are going to make it. And then there's somebody in the back row who gets ignored or is very nervous. And it's important to me, I think to everybody, to bring everybody along because you never know how that person is going to develop, discover, and change. So no act on that behind. Very, very inspiring. And uh, words of uh, sage wisdom there. That's, that's fantastic. You know, both of you are involved in uh, organization of women in film. And uh, after this break, I'm going to explore women in film a little bit more with our, with our two guests. I'm going to put them both in, a hot, in the hot seat for a little award association game about women in film. You're yeah, not going to want to miss this one. Stick around. We'll be right back after this break. You know you need video, but maybe you think you have a face for radio? We've got you covered. Our roster of on-camera talent is ready to be your spokesperson, demo your product, or even be your brand ambassador. Need help with your video marketing strategy, content, or talent? Learn more at SyncLabMedia.com. Hi, I'm Jeff Savage, marathon runner and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Savage Resilience, Conquer Adversity and Be Your Own Hero. In this powerful book, you'll discover correlations between what it takes to finish a marathon and what it takes to be successful in any long range goal you may have. Order your copy of Savage Resilience today on Amazon or by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. The audio book is also available on Audible and the iTunes store on Apple devices. I'm Jeff Savage, and I encourage you to conquer adversity and be your own hero. Make your product an internet sensation. Think with Google estimates 60% of the population prefers to watch online video content versus TV commercials. Need help with your video marketing strategy or content? Learn more at SyncLabMedia.com. Welcome back to Take Two. I'm your host, Jeff Savage, and today I am joined with Abby Killen and Gail Cronauer, two intriguing and fascinating women in film. And uh, we're going to put them in the hot seat in this segment for uh, for a fun game of word association, all about <laughs> women. <laughs> 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 no, get it uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, but Abby, I'm going to start with you, and this is just some uh, some some stream of consciousness word association based on women in film. So I'm going to give you just, uh, I'm going to give you 10 words. You're going to think the first thing that just comes to your mind in, in that general. So okay. heroin, like a female hero. <laughs> um, Sasha Kyler. Oscar. Um, Carol Burnett. Uh, blockbuster. Um, Wonder Woman. Okay, um, got it. <laughs> Indie. The Vast of Night. No. <laughs> Tenacity. Tenacity. Um. 
Olivia Newton John. Breakthrough. Right, sure. You think myself. <laughs> 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 That's not what I need to work on. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you some words as well. They're just, yeah, the stream of conscious. Things okay. that, uh, that these words remind you of in the realm of women in hell. Pioneer. Mm, uh, Loretta Young. You're doing it. Joe Crawford. <laughs> Audition. Opportunity. We would love that. Animation. My good friend Pam Doherty, who works in anime, and Tiffany Vollmer, who works in anime. Love that too. <laughs> Strength. Hillary Swank. Comedian. <laughs> and he said Carol Burnett. You this whole thing. There's a there's a beat here. Oh. Uh, Grace. Grace. Uh that's harder. Um I'm gonna say Gina David. Ooh. Sci fi. Ooh, rah, 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 rah. Sci fi. Um well, I did a sci-fi called The Vast of Night, so I'm going to say Gail Krim. <laughs> a superhero. Mm, oh, yeah, we have to go to Wonder Woman again. Yeah. Legacy. Betty Daver. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Women in film is uh, is is a topic that's it's you know, kind of important to, to my guests here. Abby and Gail are part of an association uh, known as Women in Film, and... Gail, I'm going to throw this back to you. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about Women in Film? Well, Women in Film is an organization of women and those who support women. And it was established to mentor, empower, and promote women in the industry. Women in Film Dallas, which was founded 40 years ago this year. Wow. Well, um, was the result of a national movement that was happening 40 years ago of women who were coming together too. And this is according to the founder, Elizabeth, a.k.a. Betty Buckley, who is from the Dallas area, uh, create a community of women who would support other women who were seeking to work in the film, video, moving image industries. So, Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with our audience. You know, the acting journey, you know, often does, you know, spawn off other interests that, you know, that don't build upon, you know, the adventure in acting, so to speak. <laughs> and Abby, you actually have something very unique that you have uh, embarked on a new adventure that's an offshoot from your acting adventure. Uh, there is a, uh, a musical uh, group here that uh, Abby has put together called Killin' Casey, and uh, Abby, tell our audience all about Killin' Casey. Yeah, definitely. So Killin' Casey was spawned off of Abby and the Afternoon. I had a band that I put together, and COVID happened. But the pianist and composer and I still kept in touch, and week after week we would meet and work and practice on music. And I would, uh, I mean, there's so many different experiences that I have to pull from that I watch on television um, that I see that inspires my music or my writing. It doesn't have to be my personal story, but I utilize acting in a way to where I can get into that character and then figure out what is this song that represents this life. It's fascinating, yeah. Yeah, and then Kyle Casey Herridge is an amazing pianist, composer, uh, guitarist, um, and we just started working over a year just, just to keep working on music, and we have a new release coming out June eighth. Well, yeah, call it home. Well, great, great, excellent. Where can um, our audience find out about Killing Casey? Uh, do you have a uh, profile or anything like that that I can uh, can let them know about? Yes, definitely. It's Killing K I L L I N period Casey C A S E Y, and that's um, on Instagram right now. So we'll be posting more and more updates, and it'll be on Spotify and iTunes as well and all the streaming channels. Fantastic. As a musician, who is your inspiration? Uh, who do you yeah. look up to in the music industry uh, yeah. to model your own uh, career after? That's a tough one. I, I feel like I draw inspiration from so many different people, 
But I would say Billie Eilish was the the first one that I was really drawn to as far as her songwriting. I remember listening to her original music before she got big. And and then when she hit it, um, just loved learning more about her individuality as well. Um, so I'd say Billie Eilish. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Well, Gail, what you, what's uh what's next for you? What are you working on? Is there a, is there a certain production that uh, that you're a part of that you want to know about into? So uh, I am currently uh, working on Landman, which is Taylor Sheridan's latest or one of the latest of his episodic TV series. Um, and Taylor Sheridan is from the DFW area. He's from Fort Worth. And he is wanting to bring home production to this area. So those of us who live and make our home bases here in Dallas and Fort Worth are really excited about that. So I'm working on that, and it's my first foray into recurring uh, episodes on um, a, a TV show. So that mm, an expansive experience. I learned a lot about that. And the thing with being an actor is you're always looking for what's the next thing. So um, during the pandemic, I connected with an um, agent in New York. Um, I found a manager, and I now have an agent in Atlanta, and I also changed my Dallas agent. So there have been a lot of changes in my professional career over these last um, over this last year. So I'm interested in where that's going to take me. I spent so many years teaching um, and directing and uh, putting kids through college and doing all that kind of stuff, and now it's time for me to explore different avenues. I've done a little bit of writing, um, but I'm also very involved with, as you said, women in film, but also SAG-AFTRA. Yeah, tell our audience that. more about, uh, about your involvement. Oh, the SAG-AFTRA. So um, for many years, because I was so busy with stage work and teaching work, I wasn't as actively involved in SAG. That's Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. So it's SAG-AFTRA, the two unions merged a handful of years ago. And I'm sure you all know, because you were impacted in some way, by the strike that occurred a year ago. And um, I was picked to be on the contract negotiating committee. Uh, I was an alternate, um, but that meant that I was still able to attend all the meetings. And I was from one of the small markets, because that's huge to be involved with um, in this process because most of the actors are in either L.A. or New York. And so to have representation from Nashville and Atlanta and Chicago and Dallas was huge. Um, and that was an amazing experience. It was the better part of last year, attending Zoom meetings, talking to people, um, creating rallies here. Uh, activities to support our union members and educate people about who SAG after members are. I mean, they're your neighbors. Actors are the people who send their kids to school and pay their taxes and shop at your grocery store and get their car fixed in your garage. So they're citizens, community members. And I think most people don't think of actors as that way. They're people who live on the coast, but there are a lot of us here in the middle of the country, who are working to build the industry here in Dallas. And that's another huge thing that SAG-AFTRA is working to do right now. Texas is a right-to-work state. People don't have to join the union to even be employed on a union project. And so we're working to educate actors and to encourage more people to join the union for better working conditions, better wages, and a better reputation for the Dallas market. There are more SAG after members there than we realize. So we're going to take our project there, like Taylor Sheridan is doing. So that's part of my mission. Fantastic. Thank you for telling our audience uh, more about uh, the power of the unions and mm -hmm. you know, just that it's around and that it's a powerful force here in the, in the Dallas acting and community. Abby Killen, I wanted to give you an opportunity to uh, let our audience know where they can find you and... Uh, little bit more about uh you know if where you where you are hanging out these days on social media <laughs> yeah definitely 
Well, you can always visit me at work. I work at Markham Fine Jewelry. And you can also check out our music online. I'd really appreciate it. It's Killin' Casey. Again, that new song will be out June 8th. So my whole profile, follow us on Spotify, iTunes. Um, everything will be online uh, coming up. And we have a new song just right off the bat called Expectations coming up right after that. So really excited to just keep the momentum going. This sounds like great expectation to me. <laughs> Gail, Gail uh, where can our audience find out more about you? Okay, so I'm all over the place. So of course <laughs> on Facebook, I'm still on Facebook because a lot of people are there. Uh, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. Um, so Amazon Prime. Prime. There. Amazon Prime. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> IMDb, Internet Movie Database. So uh, check it out. Check my films out. And there's something dropping on the floor. <laughs> uh, so I try to be in as many places as I can be, but it's overwhelming. But you really have to have a social media presence these days. People need to know about you. And I'm interested not just in um, presenting my acting stuff, but my person stuff, the flowers in my garden, my crazy dogs, how I <laughs> suit up to go out and work in my garden. This is though, uh, hopefully you'll be interested at least a little bit in that. It's, it's, the, it's the real uh, Gail The real Gail <laughs> Crow Tower. <laughs> now, uh, you know, somewhere out there, there is somebody who is just starting out their acting journey. I'm going to give you both uh, 30 seconds to look into that gear room and give that one piece of advice to uh, somebody who needs to hear it. So, mm -hmm. Abby Killen, you'll, uh, you know, give a one piece of advice to somebody out there who's just started their acting journey. I would say... Um... Nothing can ever stop you from doing what you love when it's already so deeply ingrained in who you are. Love it. Love it. Gail Cronauer, what's one piece of advice that you would give to somebody who's just starting out there? To know that it's work. It's a lot of work. And you can love it and you can be good at it. But unless you work at it, building your skills, building your personal relationships, taking care of yourself. No, you won't have the success and the happiness that you really, really deserve. Wow. And it's about building a life as well as a livelihood. Oh, I love that. Sage wisdom from the mentor. <laughs> and uh, and uh, a pleasure to have the student uh, alongside uh, alongside you both. This dynamic was uh, fascinating to explore. So once again, thank you very much, Abby Killen and Gail Crone, for we're being on set here with us here at Take Two. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. You can find out more about me by visiting my website at jeffsavageonline.com. You can follow Take Two on social media. We're on Instagram and LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sync Lab Media Studio. You can stream all episodes of Take Two there and also at the Sync Lab Media Network. Abby, Gail, thank you so much once again for being a part of our uh, part of our hour here today. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, come back and see us again here real soon. Mm -hmm.